which Nikon camera is best for wildlife? The Nikon D500 or the much newer Nikon Z62? Well, today I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of each camera because I've owned each camera. I've owned the Nikon Z62 now for about a month. It's not long, but it's been enough that I can easily make up my mind which is better for wildlife. The D500 is a great camera, but there's a lot of people complaining on social media, on YouTube, that the Z62 isn't the best for wildlife. Wake up! It's never meant to be a dedicated wildlife camera. If you can find anything from Nikon that tells you that this is a wildlife camera, especially for bird photography, then please share it with me because I haven't been able to find any literature from Nikon that tells you that this is a wildlife camera. If you want a wildlife camera, especially for birds in flight and for birds eye autofocus, then your only option is the Z69 at the moment if you're shooting Nikon. But does this make the Z62 an inferior camera? It doesn't. For me, how many photos do I photograph of birds in flight? It's about 10 to 15 percent. If I want to shoot 10 frames per second like I can on my D500 with the Z62, I would have to go into the continuous shooting mode that I can shoot 12 frames per second. There lies a problem because we get what's called blackout. So for a brief second, not even a second, a millisecond, we see the photo that we've just taken. So it's very hard to track a bird in flight. But that doesn't mean that you can't take great photos of wildlife, especially birds, because this is what I predominantly photograph. And I will show you today, comparing the D500 to the Z62, that if you're just shooting static bird images, static wildlife images, which most of the time that is what we shoot, static bird images, static images of kangaroos, of whatever you're photographing. And doing that, the Z62 is phenomenal. It is much better at a higher ISO than the D500 will ever be. Remember, the D500 was brought out in 2016, some six years ago. The Z62 was only brought out about 18 months ago. It is much newer. I can shoot on the Z62 at around 10,000 ISO. Very clear images. I can't do that with the D500. And today, I want to show you some samples between the D500 and the Z62. Static and birds in flight. Now, if you really want to shoot birds in flight and this is your main focus in photography, then don't look at the Z62 because you're going to be disappointed. That is a fact if you do want to shoot in high extended continuous which will give you 12 frames per second then the only two autofocus modes that you can use on your Z62 is single point or single point dynamic. They are the only two modes that you use but you're saying like well I can use many more on the D500. Yes you can and this is why I'm saying if you're shooting predominantly birds in flight then keep your D500 or if you're looking saying you have a D7500 or smaller camera and you're wanting a camera just to shoot birds in flight and you don't want to spend the money for a Z9 then buy the D500 or keep your D500. But for all other wildlife photography and especially bird photography then you will be amazed at what the Z62 can do. The dynamic range is greater, the colors are just exceptional and I'm noticing this when I'm using it with the 200 to 500. Now I've already done a video on my new wildlife setup and I'll put a link to it here and you can see what I talk about using this lens. I'm just loving the photos that are coming out of the Z62. The colors are just as good if not better than the D500. We've got four megapixels more. You might think like well four that's not that much. Believe me that is a lot when you're looking between a 20 megapixel and a 24 megapixel. Now here are some static images from the D500. This is a rose robin from Tenerfield in northern New South Wales. This is an Australian grab photographed just down the road from me here at Lake Eden. You can see beautiful. The colors are very rich. Now this image of the noisy miners was taken at 10 frames per second because it was feeding its chick. I want to get as many photos while it was feeding its chick. The Z62 can do exactly the same. And because your subject is not moving, you're going to be able to get 
the 12 frames per second because the birds are not moving. It's not like they're flying across the sky. And this is what you have to remember that you can get action shots if an egret is diving for fish and it's not moving much. You're still going to get all those shots. You're not going to miss anything. And this is what some people fail to tell you. I'm here to try to tell you real world experiences, not all sort of doom and gloom for the C6 II because the C6 II is still a great camera for wildlife. Now this is what the C6 II cannot do. These are shorebirds flying along. This was taken at two and a half thousandths of a second and the birds came in very quickly towards me and basically did a left hand turn. They banked very sharply and then took off back the other way again. I wouldn't have been able to track these birds with the C6 II. I can be honest with that. I wouldn't have been able to get that shot. Maybe I would have gotten the shot before but this exact shot, I might have missed it. I'm willing to compromise because of all the other features that the Z6 II offers me. I understand that I could miss the occasional awesome shot, but I'm willing to accept that. Now this is another shot where I might have missed. It might have been a 50-50 because the egret was chasing this little mullet around and you can see right on the bottom left hand corner, the mullet is just jumping. And to tell you, Egret missed it, but it was just chasing this little fish and the fish just kept jumping and at the end the egret just missed out. It dived but it missed the fish. The fish lived for another day. This is a 50-50. Maybe I would have gotten it. Maybe I wouldn't have gotten it. Maybe the fish would have been a little bit higher up or you would have just seen the splash. It is a 50-50 image. This is a shot. Bird in flight. Egret just about to touch down. Whether I would have gotten there or a fraction before, I don't know. To tell you the truth, I think I would have missed this again because the egret was coming in very quickly and all of a sudden puts its wings out, touches down. This is things that you have to remember. The type of photography that you're photographing and whether you're willing to accept that every now and then you are going to miss an awesome shot. Now for the C6 II. This is a chestnut teal. A very nice photo. High ISO, it was late in the afternoon, ISO 8000. I had to crop in quite a bit, so there is a little bit of digital noise there. This is taken again very early in the morning. You can see there's quite a lot of shade in the foreground here. It did an awesome job. Now this is where I also love the C6 II compared to the D500 because I can crop in more. Now understand with the D500, because it is a crop sensor, I've actually got one third more of extension. So if I was shooting at 500, theoretically my focal length is 750. But on the Z6 II, if I'm shooting at 500, then my focal length will be 500. So to get the same image, I'm going to have to crop in more, but I'm losing less detail because I've got a 24 megapixel sensor. This looks very good. The teal is a little bit soft, but take a look at what the original image looked like. Look how much I have cropped in. It is amazing the amount that I've had to crop in. You can see how much I was able to crop in to get this. Like I was stating, the D500 is great for birds in flight, but if it's an action shot and your subject is static, you're still going to get it with the Z6 II. Now this image of a kingfisher that had just taken off from its perch, I'd been watching it for a couple of minutes and it was just searching the pond and I knew that at any second it would be diving off. I had the Z6 II in extended continuous. So I could get that 12 frames per second. And because my subject was static, I knew I would be able to get at least a couple of shots of it diving down. As soon as it made the move, I started firing and I got this beautiful shot. It was a static subject and it just dived down. Just like the noisy miners, I would have been able to get the same shots with the Z6 II. So don't think that if it's a fast action, you're going to miss it because as long as your subject is static or near static, then you're going to be able to get the shots that you want. Now this is another example of a static, well near static, because it was just walking very slowly of a royal spoonbills. Now spoonbills feed just by opening their beak and just moving around. And you can see the reason they're called spoonbills is it looks like a wooden spoon. And it was just moving around all of a sudden, caught a fish and just flicked it up. And I was able at 12 frames per second to catch and the fish is in the middle of its beak. Beautiful. And I didn't miss a shot. I'm very happy. Fast action, as long as your subject 
is stationary or near stationary, you're going to get the photos. So to sum up, should you look at buying or keeping your D500 or should you upgrade and buy the Z6 II? Now, I haven't mentioned any of the mirrorless crop sensor cameras. And the reason why I didn't look at any of the crop sensor mirrorless Nikon cameras is that they are missing one key feature. And I talked about that in my previous video, and that is the toggle button up here where I can move my focus point around. I can do that with the D500. I cannot do that with the newly released Z30, the Z50 or the ZFC. They don't have that button there. And this is why I didn't go to any of the crop sensors, mirrorless Nikon cameras. If you think that you can live without this little toggle switch, then you can look at either the Z50 or Nikon ZFC. For me, I really need that. And you'll find that if you're really into wildlife photography, having the ability of moving your focus point around very quickly is a godsend. Thanks for watching. If you got any comments or feedback, leave it in the comment box below. Stay safe, enjoy wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.